the top of the hour. Helped us take it <laughs> shame. All right. Let's All right. Let's uh, get through this moderating part. Hi, everyone. My name is Gina. Uh, welcome back to the conference. If you're uh, joining us today, we have a always lovely and special presentation. Uh, the new features in Evergreen. This is for 311 Plus, a.k.a. the Ruth and Andrea Show 5.0. <laughs> yeah. N yeah. Nice intro song. That was good. All right, so Ruth and Andrew are going to be uh, taking it away. I just wanted to mention that uh, we have uh, sponsors uh, for acknowledgement. So thank you, Equinox, for the platform sponsorship. <clears throat> Easy D die for the captioning. I will put the captioning link in both chats and for Kipu for the Hackfest uh, that is going on tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to know more, uh, sorry, more about Hackfest, uh, check in the lobby, and there's uh, some information in there. Also send out an announcement later. And I guess you're good to go. I'll uh, let you know if there's any questions that show up in chat. Thank you. Gina. Awesome. While Andrea gets this screen shared uh, in, in a second, because I just like seriously three minutes ago asked her to do the driving. Yeah. Um, good. I actually did I forget. Oh, yeah. So, you know, some presentations like that are collaborative, you like decide what slides people are going to talk about. And I think we vaguely did that. Did we? But I mean, well, you put your name on a few of them. I thought you put my name on a few of them. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> anyway, everybody, welcome to Ruth and Andrew. Show. Hi. Here, let me show you my pin. Can we see my pin? My sparkly evergreen pin. So that's that's oh, all I'm going to show you. I didn't bring any of my things. Okay. Right. Well, anyway. Uh, let me actually get this in full screen. This is the fifth time we did this. Now we had a conversation about anniversaries and um, how they're actually tabulated. And Andrea was yeah. correct. But of course, I can't actually concede. And so now we have asterisks. And and double uh, daggers, yeah, and suggestions and, for yes. Gifts. So yes, we are librarians and we cite our sources. So that's right. Go. All right, put our Thank name in. Put it in the mail. Here's here's us, um, and we are both actually librarians, uh, formerly, yeah. currently, whatever, and we're going to be forever talking a lot uh, about features, and uh, we have a whole lot of content to get through, uh, more than one slide per minute of this presentation. So please make note of our email addresses. And if you have any questions, you can email us. There's 8 million other ways to get a hold of us. We are always happy to talk about Evergreen. Um, and whatever. We'll talk or, about whatever. Or whatever. We will talk about Yeah. Whatever. All right. OK, okay your so you wrote this slide. I did write this slide because uh, as I was looking through the slides, I was like, mm, there's always more. So there's going to be way too many ellipses mm -hmm. on some of these slides. Um, there's going to be um, a lot of jumping around kind of ish, mostly because Andrea is better at holding to a plot line than I am. So <laughs> I'm going to hundred percent lose the plot a couple of times. Um, it's not going to go as sequentially as it has in the past um, because we really want to celebrate a lot of milestones. And sometimes they lead back to milestones in the past and things that we're hoping for in the future. And then we are definitely going to talk about what's coming because we're looking at a, an upcoming release um, in the next like couple weeks, probably yeah. ish. Yeah. Um, and there's too much information in here, but we have links, links, and more links, and the slides will be available and the recording. But the slides probably be the thing to go for the links. Okay. Yes, so many links, and also because we're librarians, we love definitions. Um, this is. Some of the terms that you might hear um, in this in this uh, presentation, just so everybody knows, if we throw out one of these terms, this is uh, what we mean by it. So um, I did and sort of have an intention of doing a evergreen dragon lightning talk this year, but that I did not come together. So I'll do it next year. But I did actually bold another term that is a new word in the English language because we get to do that in the English language, just make uh -huh. things up. Uh, yeah, so you'll do. see it in there. You might have already seen it, Andrea. Also, I'll also be a little bit on jar jargon outlook in just in case we have like missed anything. Just to yeah, and if we use jargon present. like that you don't you understand, please please drop a comment in the chat, and and we will try our best to define it on the fly. So that's right. All right. Um, I added. Hey Ruth, I added this slide uh, twenty five minutes ago. Um, that's awesome. It just did they really use though my Mojo Dojo Casa House gift though. I did not. I did not. You can probably. It's not a gift. I don't know why I said that. that. Um, no, it's too late. Anyway, Dojo is something you might hear us talk about with uh, great hatred and in our hearts. Um, 
which is, it, it, this is kind of what Dojo is. You probably have seen, um, a, there's a couple of these interfaces still lingering around, mostly in acquisitions, one in um, circulation policies. But basically it's a very, very old framework. It is clunky, it is inaccessible, it is archaic, it doesn't do nice with web client stuff. It is ugly, that is not my opinion. But let's remember, screenshot here. it is our heritage. So let, let us give it its due. It made the thing work back when it needed to work before now. Yeah, I mean, okay, but you know, you can have history that you don't agree with now. <laughs> that you don't really, mean. that's <laughs> very that true. Don't acknowledge. No, that's, I, I'm being a little too flippant. Dojo is an important part of, of the Evergreen uh, client history, but the community has been working very, very diligently to update these remaining interfaces into Angular, which is a more modern website framework. And as you will see later, we are so very, very close, y'all. We might very be able to do close. it in the next release, but first. But first. Let's go back in time. Let's go back. We actually talked about this <laughs> last year. I think. Yeah, we did. Little, well, it okay, was yeah. right before the release. So we talked about pending stuff. So we'll probably yeah, talk through this pretty quickly. All right. Here is my summary of 3.11 or our summary of 3.11. Um, it was, you know, lots of, of good stuff happening. Um, Angular. Um, this is the first of many Dojo Delenda S references that this stud deck contains. Um, this was also the first release where we started incorporating a lot of um, like a sudden resurgence in accessibility work, primarily uh, funded by King County Library System and written by my colleague Stephanie Leary with assistance from um, Jane Sandberg at Princeton University. Um, a lot of accessibility features um, that were uh, really starting to, to revisit all those uh, web, web client things that were just not accessible. And as Stephanie said in her presentation yesterday, um, accessibility, making an interface accessible generally tends to make it better for all users, regardless of their particular accessibility needs, because it intersects with usability. So some of these were small changes, some of these were big changes, some of them are ongoing changes, but that was a big 3.11 theme. And then infrastructure, it should always be infrastructure week. I don't know why everyone doesn't think infrastructure is sexy. Infrastructure is sexy. So, you know, and in this case, both front end and back end, which made it double sexy. I want to make a joke, but I'm not going to. Okay. You Angular catalog it. staff view tab is amazing. Speaking of sex, sexy things, and you have a picture right here, right? Yes, I have a picture in the next slide. Next slide. I'm not going to read all those words. So nope, this fine. was something that was notably lacking when we moved to the Angular staff catalog, formerly known as the angst cat, but we've let that go. Um, so because this used to be the OPAC view in the staff client, when that went away and we brought in the Angular staff catalog, um, it lost some of these things. And so this was a development that was done um, to bring back a lot of the information that was lost so it didn't have to go to what was becoming a deprecated uh, patron view. Andrea, I know you have more you want to talk about this though, right? Um, no, I mean, you know, this was... Uh... Oops, see, this is why I shouldn't drive. Um, this was just to mention that this was uh, funded by CW Mars and that um, you can't really see it in this screenshot um, because of the screenshot was taken before some other accessibility updates, but these are all actually hyperlinked. So title, uh, series title, author, subject, the formats and additions, um, those are all actually hyperlinks. If you click them, it will uh, execute a search within the staff catalog. Now this is um, in many ways addressing what was kind of a re regression. Um, it will, because when- Definitely the, a, percept a perception of regression. When the old TPAC was embedded in the catalog, it could do these things, but then when the community opted to divide the uh, staff catalog from the public catalog, the staff catalog lost some of those abilities. So this was restoring that. And thank you to CW Mars for making that possible. All right. Okay, I added this one back here. This was funded by uh, Evergreen Indiana, so close to my heart. Um, and this was a pretty, um, I don't know if light development is kind of a thing. It wasn't a huge, huge project, um, but it had pretty big implications. Uh, previously, in order to change barcodes and things like that, you needed to have the update copy uh, permission, which is a pretty powerful permission. It allows you to do a lot of things. And it allowed um, a lot of our staff and users 
to uh, do more than they were trained to do. So we were finding a lot of, um, I don't say mistakes, people venturing into territory where they did not know the way back out. And so having this per permission added uh, in now allows them to just do those kind of tasks that they are actually tasked with doing and not have to worry about everything that's going on in the holdings editor. So it also fixes a silent failure in, in the launch pad ticket in there. That's all I yep. want to say about that. Yep, yep. It allows you to do more granular things. Um, yep. Like let your CERC staff replace barcodes without giving them the unmitigated authority to edit um, item records. Uh-huh. We like that. It does do a permission check too, which is cool. Yeah. All right. This is one um, that doesn't have uh, pretty pictures, but there are links to a previous presentation that uh, my colleague Stephanie did last year um, that, you know, shows you at least how these frameworks interact with one another. Um, so this uh, is one of those things that just uh, makes sure that Evergreen, so Evergreen is the top layer. And then, you know, underneath that are, is Angular and Bootstrap, you know, which are the frameworks in which the software lives i'm explaining this really badly and i know that every so, i mean it's what like, renders face what renders evergreen right onto a screen yeah i'm sorry stephanie she taught me better than this anyway um but the point of the story is is that making sure that evergreen uses the latest versions of these frameworks um make sure that we have the latest security features associated with these frameworks uh tools accessibility features although don't get stephanie started on accessibility and angular that is a whole other thing and i really hope that definitely get her started to, just in a different time go at a different go to their conference once and yell at them all yeah. about it it'll be great um but this will uh this just gives us you know the latest and greatest framework we are already planning to go up i think to the next one angular 17 and bootstrap 6. it's just important to keep up with your frameworks you know and this is part of the infrastructure infrastructure is always sexy it means the thing is going to work not just today and not that it worked yesterday, exactly. but it's going to work tomorrow. It's sexy even if you don't know how it works. Okay, I want you to talk about this one and sure. I'm just gonna sit here with a look of adoration on my face. Okay, can I can I see this? Uh, wait, I muted. I... Oh, I don't know. I mean, how do you characterize adoration in somebody's face? Well, I don't like, know. I I'm feel look, adoration. At you right now, like, so look at look adored, adoring. <laughs> So did you mean, this is a multi-step uh, project that has been developed by Equinox and funded by ECDI, um, and 3.11 saw the debut of multi-word single class suggestions. Um, it also uh, expanded the amount of configuration that you can do, and it also made extensive performance improvements. I know that um, earlier versions of did you mean had, there you go, look, thank you, Ruth, she loves you, I am. Um, earlier versions of did you mean did have some performance concerns on large data sites, but those have by and large been resolved. Um, and to the extent of which if you do, especially if you're an Equinox hosted customer and you're running into these, uh, any issues with did you mean like we would really like to know about it in detail because I keep hearing these vague things, but nobody can actually, you know, we're going to do ECDI is going to do a little like we're going to try to crash a server. A week Great. from tomorrow. Like good party. Can I come? I know. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Katie's cool. going to let us know uh, the the time and the place, um, but we're going to try to crash a a pale server. Wait, good times at Evergreen. Yeah, I what? think that's one of our servers. It is. Oh, hey, Galen and Jason. Uh, they're going to try to crash the pales yeah. resource sharing test server next week. Heads up. That's right. All right. <laughs> so, did you mean so the multi word search lets you do? Um, you know, it lets you do phrases basically. So in this search, I've done the series for pet the cat. It didn't find anything, even though that's spelled correctly. Um, but it knows that, um, you know, um, it also will do, wait, what happened to my, oh, did you mean Pete the cat? I'm sorry, you guys, I have not had enough coffee. So did you mean Pete the cat? It gives you the suggestion um, right there and you click on that and it will execute a search. One of the coolest things about did you mean is that it is strictly bibliographic based search results, which means it's not just going to give you a suggestion based on, you know, uh, term matching or whatever. It's actually looking at a special index that it builds that yes, does take a while to build um, at first um, that, that indexes all of this. So it's only gonna give you suggestions that will generate search results. Um, so, I made this for Jason. Don't, don't, don't stop baiting Jason Boyer. We love Jason Boyer. I do too. Okay. Anyway, 
And Jason, I literally just heard about the server crashing plan like five seconds ago when she talked about it. So I, I'm sorry. I more people knew. And we're not really going to try to crash it. The, audit, I mean, the goal is to not crash it, but. This is, you, you know, know, live and in person. All right. So live and then and there's person. also um, suggestions based on authority for XX cross references. And I realize that this screenshot is a bit of a contrived example, but we were using a test data set. I recognize as a former reference librarian that probably nobody is going to ever type in the words frozen stars searching for black holes. But there you go. And you can see that it gives you the suggestion of black holes. I mean, this also can. works in the OPAC. Um, so here I um, misspelled cemetery and it gave me the suggestions, um, some of which you can see are based on kind of stemming, but all of them have corrected cemetery to be spelled correctly and not the way pet cemetery spells it. Um, actually, that's not the way pet cemetery spells it. Don't listen to me. I'm not a horror person. I know, but I totally went to pet cemetery too. Okay. Let's be real. All right. Well, I'm a huge horror <laughs> weedy, so I've never even seen that movie or read the book. I, I fell asleep during it because it was too phenomenon. scary. Yeah. It's my coping mechanism. I can't do it. I'm a weenie. Anyway, um, and then hey, another very on. common misspelling here, Barbara Streisand. Um, you can see that that one has corrected it correctly to Barbara Streisand. So um, there's a lot going by in the chat. Is there anything? That it's all just to? crosstalk. You're cool. good. I'm watching for questions. Yep, it's good. Ooh, cute and just. This is another Speaking of sexy, sexy, this is it. This is it. Sexy yes, alert. It all right. So this is and see, um, that's it. <laughs> I missed that you put in that graph. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Do you recognize it? Should I? What What's that mean from Far Field Productions? Anyway, no, it's it's an early odds reference. I don't. I don't. I don't recognize that. Um, no. Okay. Anyway, so it's for um, myself. What this does is it uh, kind of takes all of your bib and authority record processing out of the way of the search indexing process and makes it its own. Uh, its own process and also allows administrators to parallelize this where possible. Um, an administrator can also make processing queues, groups of processing queues. And what this does to you, the end user, is it fixes some longstanding bugs related to, that will intersect with this sort of re-indexing like authority merge timeout. So I love parallel processing. Yeah, we love parallel That's processing. Good. Would the suggestions also take into account accents and umlauts? Ooh, I think we have actually have an open bug on that related mm -hmm. that, that our, our uh, Czechia friends came mm -hmm. up with. And I think the answer is um, it depends on the normalization. <laughs> and, so, Jason, and Jason. I, is very you're just going to have to look at it. It, um, it requires seeing the text that he wrote. Yeah, no, I am looking at it. Okay. Um, but in terms of Kian's question, um, that is something that I believe there is an open bug on. Um, and I, yeah. Oh, thank you, Mike. Oh yeah. Hey, Mike's here. Mike did a lot of this sexy infrastructure stuff. So we can pretend that it's a picture of Mike pointing to the authority merge timeout, you know, there you go. Hmm. That's hmm. cool. All right. I'd have thought of that. I'd like modified it a little bit. Right. Okay. You're up. This is also you, but notice my, my, uh, my oh, word you did there. bold Yousen. Am I still talking or do you want to talk about this? Oh, got it. Sorry. <laughs> do, do you want to talk while you're coughing? All right. Yausen. Yes, this is the uh, accepted plural of Yaus, yet another org unit setting, which is slang for library settings. Um, so uh, the this uh, work funded by Pales uh, creates a uh, set of Yausen that can collectively set custom values for stock penalties. So what you do, um, I've listed the workflow there of where you'd create this, and then you can tie with the Yausen, um, tie that custom penalty to a stock penalty. Um, so what this does is it lets you create org unit kind of specific iterations of these policies. So, and this is what those, I know this is a very boring screenshot, but this is what those new Yausen are. And you can see where I've mapped in this screenshot example, I have mapped the patron exceeds fine penalty to the staff uh, HR penalty. So it's not boring to to system administrators though. Nah, they're all doing it on the command line. It depends on what kind of system administrator is different. That's true. That's true. Um, yes, Stephen Idol, the Yausen suffix does sound like a German plural, and I do not know who pluralized 
that that might be lost to history if any of you old timers um in this in the chat know that you know drop a comment this one's know. definitely you yeah so uh one of the things that has been a challenge over the the years well maybe i'd go back a little bit and say that um when you set up stock evergreen you have the option to load what is called the concerto data set that allows for testing but um over the years as new features have been added and um there it has become a little bit difficult to test using just concerto because it doesn't have a whole lot of real world uh, setups um, other than just having some bib records and some holdings and and some patron accounts so uh this was a definitely a community collaborative um project that was um wrangled by several people uh blake from mobius uh wrote some scripts for this and uh so this is an expanded data set enhanced concerto that has uh, more org unit um, information in it more uh, patrons different transactions in there there's acquisitions data and so that it can be used a little bit quicker for testing new features um, and it is available as an option to load uh, when you are setting up stock evergreen and the next slide is an important example about you got to be careful when you're stealing your past work with which Ruth and I both shamelessly did for this presentation by the way if you see a lot of reused content it's because you know we've talked about these three releases a lot in the last year and you know why reinvent yes. the slide deck but this interface is now in angular um even though yeah. in its this uh particular version it is it is not um then, but you would be able to go in and see all of that information um, yep. now as if it was loaded into um, onto a test server uh, in those new interfaces. Correct. Correct. Um, and hence, and, yes, does have does have circulation modifiers. <laughs> yes, and they, they are pictured right here. Yes. Circulation modifiers. I tend to when on test servers, I tend to name circulation modifiers fairly weird things like I'll name them after my cats. So these looking, came, you know, these came directly from Evergreen, Indiana. We just pulled them right out. Yeah, no, and these are yeah. all perfectly fine. Uh, you know, they're they're not funny. That aren't funny. Like they're not named yeah. like George, like my cat. Yeah, yeah, or elephant. Okay, that's a fair point, Jeremy. Realia is a very fun word. There okay. are so few audiences where that joke would land, and this is one of them. So thank you, Jeremy, for knowing. It's true. Your audience. It's true. All right. Okay. We're up to the nearer past. Yeah, near past. Um, what makes 312 special? So 312 was um the second women majority release team in Evergreen history, and actually 313 will be the third. Um, and uh, as you can see, 2022, 2023, 2024. So, you know, I know there's a lot of women in this community because librarianship is a woman-dominated profession, but there's not a lot of women in the software world. So it's always very cool to uh, buff up that representation. And what I'm also proud of, um, and I mean, I've got like a totally dirty lens here because I was on the 312 release team. Um, it was a bunch of people, myself included, who were fairly new in, not necessarily new to the community, but new to that role. They new were to new to the release process new to the release for sure. Team, or they were new committers or they were new mm -hmm. developers, like especially compared to some of, you know, people who have done releases in the past. Who are and and I need to also shout out Galen Charlton oh, for um, also because we were a very, um, can I say green team? Yeah, no, I was like literally seconds away from saying the venerable elder states people of our community, like yes. Galen Charlton, who, yeah, who, who definitely like shepherded yeah. us over yeah. the line. Uh, for real. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, lots of good things happening in 312. Um, and including it was the most uh, impactful beta measured by bug fixes and features since the dawn of the web client. Um, more angular stuff more accessibility stuff a lot of quote unquote, a lot of accessibility stuff and, and a lot of quote unquote small improvements i they're yep. small in terms of code changes but they're big in terms of quality of life um 
And we'll be talking about some of those as well as continuing the theme of infrastructure week is sexy tooling. Um, there were some cool tools in 312 to make development uh, and testing easier um, and to help developers write better code faster without getting bogged down in like little detaily things, automate that process. So this one, um, and I, I neglected to mention it earlier, but King County Library System um, in Seattle has sponsored a lot of these Angular ports that Equinox has done recently. Um, and this is one of them. This is the custom org unit trees. Um, this is one of those things where you tend to not interact with it a lot. You fire it and forget it. But uh, we you know, re-implemented this in Angular and with it kind of rewrote that tree component, which is those checkboxes on the left. Uh, you'll see that in other iterations like reports, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, and Full disclosure, I had never looked at the org unit trees ever. <laughs> the cost, and and I was like sitting back thinking, this feels like you're talking about angularizing it, meaning this existed beforehand. I need to go look at it. And as soon as I did, I'm like, of course we use that. And then of course I'm thinking, okay, now we need to like update this, 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 and that, hmm. the other thing. And so also got rabbit trailed away from this presentation. Uh, but thank you that to King happened. County for this. Um, yeah. Now we have more work to do in Evergreen, Indiana. Uh, you're, you're, thanks. Yeah, no, it's um, makes it a lot better um, for, for a lot easier to use. Um, the other one is link checker. Now this was sort of like a, a redheaded stepchild, I should say, of um of, of I used the, to have red hair, so oh, there I'm you go. sorry. Should I not have No, it's okay. Up? It's funny. Is it I'm always worried. Is that a joke? Am I allowed to say that anymore? Somebody I think it's me funny for me personally if, as somebody that used to That is to offensive have and I'm just old and need to update my language. Um Maybe both. okay. So link checker has always been a thing. A lot of people didn't use it because well, it was hard to um hard to use. Uh, it was uh, a little dense, a little like it just wasn't an interface you could really easily nav navigate around in. So this was another one funded by King County. Um, this ports the existing interface to Angular. It also renames some of its components. It re-implements some of the steps. It tries to make it, I mean, of course, there is updated documentation, but I know that people don't read documentation, even though I write a lot of documentation. I know, I know. It's shock, shocker. Sorry, I sorry, it. Debbie. Sorry, everyone. Lena, everyone who's written amazing documentation. Felicia, uh, Angela, I read it. who is no longer part of Equinox, also wrote amazing documentation. Anyway, oh, sad face. The goal of usability, in some sense, is to make interfaces that people don't need to read the documentation for, at least for their basic functions, right? So we yes. tried to do that with this and make it more usable, make it easier to interact with. We also added this cool manage grid filters, so. All of these Angular, this is, to, to use two jargon, this is an Angular grid. So this is a grid and Angular grids have these column headers and filters. Um, and what this manage grid filters button does is it lets you create um, Defaults? You know, a group of filters. So you can set like save, say, set multiple filters, click manage grid filters, and then you can save them. And then every time you come back to this interface, you're like, yeah, I want that set of like four filters. Um, in this interface and you can do that you know as many times as you need to i did not play around with that and i need to definitely do that yeah. that looks like a ton of fun it is a ton of fun and it can also be ported very easily to any other angular grid interfaces so any of you developers out there want to grab that i can't believe i said that playing with like grid filters lap it on there like fun anyway. jeremy i don't know if you were making a dirty joke or if that is a serious question can you please clarify sir they are not sticky just fyi <laughs> Okay, there. Um, no, but this this when you do manage grid filters, you can save them, and it saves it as a workstation um, setting. So right, or a workstation user setting. So yeah, you can. Um, but the manage grid filters that creates the default set. It creates a set for you. It creates your your set that you can apply to this right. grid. So if you just want to see like you know things within a certain filter set, you can do. That I'm gonna play around with that. Just just do that it. way. So, it is okay, cool. cool. Thanks. All right. It is 12 29 p.m. Just as I know we're going. going. All right. Um, printer settings. So this combines a couple of formerly separate admin pages. Um, this was developed by Bill Erickson at KCLS. And this now gives you hatch status, settings, print configurations on a single interface. Um, 
If we I, could like bring Bill out right now and shower him with like flowers and gifts and all of our anniversary gifts. Yeah. For okay. this, this is like the quality of lifest thing that I can mm. think. And that's right. I'm going with quality of lifest. It's not qualities of life. Quality no, of life. Quality of lifest. I would it's go the quality of life. One. It's the best quality of life thing. All right. Everyone life shower life love it. with Bill. Love for Bill yes. uh, Erickson. 42. In the that's right. Blake, you're right. 42 right there. 42 to Bill. All right. Okay. We do okay. have to keep going though, because uh, I, know. I think we're only halfway through our slides. Oh, okay. Keep on going then. Uh, Tiffany Little at Pines. Um, this is another one of those, like, I would say this is a pretty big quality of life feature for uh, oh, acquisitions yeah. librarians, because yeah. this is the thing that existed in the back end, uh, but now it exists in an interface and you can do it yourself. I mean, with appropriate permissions. So um, this uh, is something that ACT people I know have waited for for a long, 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 long time. Um, so cheers, Tiffany, for, you know, being the change. All right. Um, no pretty pictures here, but there's also been a bunch of uh, improvements thanks to Josh Stompro at Lake Agassiz Regional Library. Um, taken as a whole, these fixes improve a lot of keyboard support um, for the mark record, create mark record workflow, which is both a big accessibility improvement and also an improvement to the speed of the workflow. Those of you who remember like way, way, way back in the days of the Zool client, it was really super keyboard friendly. Um, mm -hmm. Browsers have their own ideas about keyboard shortcuts, which is part of what makes keyboard stuff harder in browsers. But this restores, you know, a lot of some of those uh, keyboard access. Do you have a favorite thing on this list, Andrea? Do I have I a have favorite, favorite thing, thing on this list? Mm -hmm. um, it would probably be uh, jumping to flat text header to the last one, 203.1177. Okay. Mine is actually the focus, the te the template selector. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that too. That's but awesome. also keyboard support for flat text editor. Mm. Yeah. Always. Kate Coleman, this is why you're at the Ruth and Andrea show. We are here to educate. That's right. All right. I have been doing too much talking. Ruth, you should talk. Oh, I mean, it's fine. I can this talk. one really. Um, so I have no idea about this one. Read it other than I know that there were previously um, hard coded statuses um, in there that had to do with determining what items were eligible for holds. Um, it was basically just available and shelving or reshelving, I think. Yeah. Um, but now yeah. there have been functions put in there, if possible, that make this a little bit more dynamic. And um, you can see, I'm not reading what's on this screen. I know that it works. It's amazing. It makes it, it makes it work faster and more dynamically. And also, if you were in the session about resource sharing, it makes um, the queue list also more dynamic. So do not believe in the queue list is a lie. Queue list. <laughs> queue list is a lie, everybody. The holds pull list is also a lie. It's real. It's real, but it's just not. It's just not sanctified. I'm okay. going to call, I'm going to call upon, I'm going to call upon Mike Riley under to drop in some citations about why it is neither real nor sanctified. Okay. okay. And if you, if you really want to say about that, this does can... not mean function goes to hard coding notice that's not an arrow. It says function is better than hard, better coding. Than hard coding. Functions are better. Yep. And this is to uh, the example that Jennifer Pringle dropped in the chat is exactly correct. So one of the key use cases here is you can have items uh, that you can set to a display status to indicate that they are somewhere not on their regular shelf location, but still have them be holdable and available. Yes. And they can now fill holds dynamically. So thank you, Jason Stevenson, for this little bit of fun. Um, how much time do you have? Not not at all, Mike. Just drop in a link to Hungry yeah, Hungry yeah, Space just... Hippos, please, and thank you. All right. <laughs> More stuff added to the holds poll. This continues Yay. to be pull list. This continues to be an interface, first of all, that is great. Um, mm -hmm. And second of all, it keeps getting greater. Mm -hmm. And adding these things makes it more useful for, and I see people from Indiana saying, ooh, and I'm like, 312, 312, probably be 313 for you, but you'll get these things. Yep. It's exciting. And this was Bill Erickson and Dan Bream um, at Harrison, Bill Erickson, in case you lost, and Dan Bream at Harrison Public Library, which I believe this is the first time I have mentioned it's not Dan's first code commit, I don't think, but I think it's the first time that he has made this presentation. So welcome to the Ruth and Andrea show, Dan, if you're in the audience. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, just to note, 
this is a lie. This interface, when you load it, gives you the best set of things that is available right then, but it is not canonical, and it'll change the very second any kind of circulation action happens that impacts anything on this list. So, you know, that is my very short version. But trust it anyway. Trust it. Well, yes. Trust it. Don't... <laughs> but don't print your poll list out like eight hours before you pull. No, 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 Especially no. in a busy consortium, print that list out and go because your pull list is constantly changing. That's right. Print it out before you're going to the stacks. Not pull eight the copy. Hours someone needs it. Thank stacks. you, Mike. Right. All right. Here, finally, we're back to pictures. It's been a minute. And this is a great one. Yes. And this was Noble, right? Or CW This was Mark. Noble. This was Noble. Cool. And this is another uh, one of those things that sort of is restoring a regression from uh, back when the TPAC was embedded in the staff catalog, and this is now the Angular staff catalog. Anyway, I'm sorry that my screenshot cuts off like, you know, most of the actual added content, but I wanted to show it in its uh, context. Here. But I would also say that this is better than it was before, because before, of course, if you were in TPAC, you're scrolling down to get to added content. Mm -hmm. This puts it front and center and really takes advantage of the novelist. Yep. Um, it generally also doesn't take it select, like 8 million but... years to load like it used to. Correct. Um, and that cute little star, thanks to Stephanie Leary, is, um, is dynamically styled, the tab. So that star will be uh, grayed out and it will say no added content if there's no added content available. And this is controlled by library settings, a.k.a. Yausen. Um, Yausen. So if you have a big consortia and some libraries have novelists and some don't, you can absolutely set it up so it's only seen in certain staff catalogs. Um, this does not have any other service providers now other than novelist, but um, if you know, it can certainly be extended to uh, include other service providers pretty easily. Through development, all things are possible. Through development. All right. All this is Jane Sandberg. Yay, Jane. This is Jane Sandberg and it has to do with course reserves. Yeah. And and Ruth and I are both public librarians. We're both public librarians and we're like, this is amazing and we don't use this it. This is amazing. <laughs> um, but this lets you do searches for course reserve things, both in the uh, public catalog shown on the left and the staff catalog shown on the right. Um, it makes me want to just have a course so that I can just like, you, like, create something for that public libraries could actually utilize this for something I just don't know what yet yeah there no, you I go mean, you can use course reserves in public libraries for displays oh, that, that is a great thing a great okay. use case I would love somebody to like talk about different ways to use course reserves other than what you think of course being an academic setting oh, that's true Lena has a whole <laughs> I should know this because I work with Lena, but of course she has a whole handout on it. And if you have not seen Lena's handouts, Lena's handouts are amazing. Are amazing. All right. Okay, there's so many on. things going on about this. Okay. I, okay. I'll, this I'll, one I'm to... not going to talk too much about because I only sort of barely understand it like in a deep technical sense. What you need to know is that it is, a, you know, it, it, it is it. more important than we can actually um, articulate to you. It ha this has to do with the foundation of the foundation. Yes, thank you. I had You're too welcome. much coffee this morning, and so I'm now starting to trigger okay. my words. So this is the short version: is this is an architectural change that to how Evergreen's different parts talk to each other. And if you have questions beyond that, I have linked a couple of um, Bill's uh, presentations here. I will also update this slide to include the link to his presentation that he gave uh, as a, a pre-conference pre mm -hmm. this Monday. Um, which is more of a deep dive. Bill, I love you. I honestly tried to attend that presentation and realized that it was not for me. I was not the intended audience. So I went Yet. back instead. Yes. All right. So currently this is optional for Evergreen and its messaging service, OpenSurf, but there is kind of community discussion about making this a requirement for a future Evergreen and OpenSurf release. But this is uh, basically going to modernize and speed up some internal um, Evergreen chit chats. All right. I'm still talking. Why am I talking? So I, because you're the one that like wrote all the documentation for most of these. <laughs> I didn't write any documentation for this. This is Jason Stevenson. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually have not interacted with this much at all. But the short version of this is if you are routinely exporting mark records for ingest by a third party surface, such as a discovery layer, mm -hmm. uh, side loading mark records into your discovery layer, you will probably find these to be useful additions to this script. Thank you. And you're talking because I'm here for color and you're here for content. Okay, that's true. You are, you know, the more entertaining one. 
No, I would not say that. I'm just here for color. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm play by play and you're the color commentator. Got it. I mean, not like skin. I just, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, in anyway. a baseball sense, I get it. Yeah. All right. Oh, here's another fun tooling one. Um, and by fun, I mean. It's and also shout out to Jane Sandberg for this one. Shout out to Jane Sandberg, but also uh, and, and many Matthews other too. developers touched it, yeah. including Bill Erickson, Galen Charlton, Mike Rylander, Stephanie Leary. I'm sorry if I forgot anybody in that list. Um, oh, thank you, Jason, for pointing out that Mark export improvements are also Galen and Josh Stompro. You, you know, what? every patch year takes a village. If I cite someone by name, it's because they had the primary involvement in it but not a single thing that has ever gone into evergreen right. except for oh we heard them talking about it in irc but right. <laughs> is is a single thing except sometimes i will just write and commit docs changes all by myself because you know yolo is how we do it in docs but this is a this is a quality um code quality it is thing. and as somebody i am i am married to an artist and in my current career i uh wrangle software developers and i have long realize that software developers are essentially creative types that's um, correct they are very much like in the creative like especially if they're if they're in like the zone it is similar to like an artist being in the zone that's much more like an artist than like you know so you think of somebody crunching numbers and doing analytical things no it is very much an inspirational driven activity so the good thing about lint rules <laughs> is that they will when artists are artisting um you know, they might not necessarily think be thinking about specific rules and software does like rules. So the great thing about Lint is that uh, Lint rules will proactively catch like bugs related to syntax or style, accessibility guidelines, standard interface elements that we already use, et cetera. So this frees developers to think about the more creative problem solving aspects of code um, since the Lint rules will correct these smaller errors. So it's sort of like, um, like using a spell checker in word processing when you're writing your, you know, great American novel or whatever, the spell checker is going to pick up, you know, your spelling errors and hopefully free you to think about like the more creative aspects. So, so quality and efficiency. There you go. Are what these, these bring in. And I had a moment this morning where I was skimming through these and trying to figure out if I were going to screenshot like two of these to show in this presentation, which one would I do? But these next two slides cover 27 individual accessible yeah. indexes that went into 312. 23 of these um, were written by my colleague, Stephanie Leary, which was uh, work was sponsored by King County. And then um, Jane Sandberg and Gary Collum uh, also contributed to this impressive total. Um, all I can say is that these are the kinds of things where you don't notice them until you do. And mm -hmm. they're going to, uh, especially the color contrast things like, it might be color contrast and all text color contrast and all text you're going to be like oh my gosh yeah. i didn't realize i was missing that and now it's actually so much better stephanie talked um about this yesterday in her presentation with lena and jennifer um about like just color contrast about buttons about not using like warning colors in inappropriate contexts like yellow buttons this work does not include yellow buttons but 313 will include the death of yellow buttons um so yeah these are mm -hmm. just all all i can say is that just go you know look through these. These are all staff client bugs, by the way, but um, as we announced yesterday, Equinox is going to be working with BC Libraries Cooperative on OPAC work next. We are so excited about this. Uh, BC Co-op handed us a list of like a hundred things that real like lived experience users who use accessibility tools mm -hmm. in their everyday life have identified as OPAC accessibility needs. We're going to be working on those. It is super duper exciting so and if you haven't started having this happen yet it will happen soon that you will have stephanie leary's voice in your head saying um do not use warning uh colors and also you must use alt text and also opening in a browser is an accessibility and a new tab is an accessibility issue um you may choose to do it anyway whatever i understand but Stephanie will things. be somebody you start dreaming about just her voice saying, don't do that. This is true. And also you will start seeing accessibility problems everywhere. everywhere. You're going to be like, everything is terrible. Didn't anybody, didn't Stephanie look at this? Stephanie, fix the whole internet, all right? 
<laughs> I know, and, and, I, and I'll bet that Stephanie's probably looking at the logo on the screen uh, background right now and saying, that's not, I know, but I'll bet she is. I'm just saying. I bet she is too. <laughs> okay. We love you. We're in your head too. Uh, all right. 313 will be coming up at the end of next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and it's more, it's more of the same, but different. It's more of the same, but getting better. Bunches exactly. of Angular, yeah. bunches of accessibility, yep. and of course, security. All right. So um, Angular has been on our themes for the last several releases. However, pending this for 313 deal. are the last pieces of acquisitions, as well as Cirque Policies admin. And um, Dojo, you know, might finally be Delenda. And if you studied Latin and can conjugate that correctly, please let me know. Obviously, I did not. Um, other archaic interfaces, which are not technically Dojo, but are also still archaic, um, include reports, with the exception of the template editor. So there's also an Angular reports uh, interface pending. And then, of course, um, security, um, two other pending features. Um, one is a separate reports feature for um, report security that was sponsored by uh, BC Co-op, and then uh, SIP redaction sponsored by OWL. Um, I was going to say, can we get a shout out for, for SIP security? Anybody, anybody, anybody? If, if you really want to shout out SIP security, merge it because that's, you know, waiting, it's waiting. It wants your Well, I, I can't merge anything, but. Not you personally, but, you know, okay. if, you're, if you're a core committer and you're here. You're, 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 you're my friend. Please, yeah, please merge you, it. You it go. is like, yeah. God, it has been out there for like so many, like I think 18 months or something. I am so sorry to Somebody. our good friends at OWL about that. Um anyway anyway <laughs> shout out <laughs> merge merge so yeah and this is actually this is this next set of slides is about shame this is kind of committer shaming i mean not I shaming love, i love you all yeah i love you all but there's a lot of things on that hyperlink 313 roadmap that are so so close a lot of really cool stuff we're only going to look at a fraction of it because we only technically have four minutes left in this presentation ha 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 so uh, Keen SIP is a uh, internet protocol that that allows uh, communication between the ILS and something else. Yeah. So if you have, um, like, if you I'm here for all your over simplifications. If you've got like lockers or self check stations, a lot of times they're using SIP to talk back to your ILS or overdrive. Yeah. Or overdrive. anyway. All right, Ruth, talk about AC. Uh, acquisitions is. <laughs> Okay, there's Bill the Cat from Bloomsbury County. Um, there are so many things that uh, we have been working on for years, developing, testing. We are right at the end, um, hoping to get all of these things into 313, which is a rewrite of the claims interface, rewrite of the invoices. Um, there are a lot of details in all of this. Also a rewrite into Angular of both the Mark Federated search and the Z3950, which was kind of a little bonus in there because they actually use the same stuff. Uh, but there are idiosyncrasies between acquisitions and cataloging. And then the background importer um, that is going to be in both I'm going to say Vandalay for the old people, but the Ma the Mark batch import export interface, as well as the load Mark order records interface. Um, there's a link there to Launchpad that can. Is that to an omnibus ticket? Must so, be. It's to both. Yeah. So uh, we put out the branch for both right. ACK A and ACK B on one branch. They're all in one branch. So that we're very excited about this. Should go to the correct. One and if not, it's the duplicate one. I'm pretty sure it's the correct one. Hey, yeah. let's look at some pictures. Yeah. Claim I mean, eligible. They item. stand on their own, but yeah. so this is going to be the claims interface. Um where in a claim is going to be if you ordered something, it doesn't show up in a certain amount of time or it shows up and it's damaged or shows up and you don't want it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, that you can apply a reason to basically send it back or to get a refund or something yep invoices <laughs> invoices um the the functionality of invoices is actually what i'm excited about of course this is what something that we see very often when things are uh, ported into angular is that because it is a modern 
um, language, web language, that that there is already increased functionality, but yep. there is additional increased functionality in invoices. Yep. Um, and this is new on the right. That, yes, which I, I don't, how do people live without that before? I don't know. I mean, they're living without it now because it hasn't actually been right. I'm going to crack through the next few because they're mostly it. just pictures. Mm -hmm. um, line, and plus, you guys can go back and watch this or look at our slides. So, And also, it's going to be amazing in practice. Line items look like this. Uh, direct charges looks like this. Um, batch receive. So this now collapses the numeric and the list modes into one. So you can either select, you know, per line item to receive a set number of copies or specific copies per, per item. item. Yeah. So you don't no longer have to pick that from the beginning. You can just pick it based on the copy in hand. Ta -da. Um, here is the Zetheran 50 and Mark Federated search. Um, they both basically look like this. Um, root that is Ruth's remove field group from testing. Yeah. Listening. That screenshot yeah, I, I just, it into the official documentation. That was another thing I didn't know actually existed. And um, so, and I, and I put in a thing that said, I don't know what you're talking about. This doesn't work. And they're like, yeah, it does. You have to set it up. And so I set it up and that's how I set it up because I always set things up ridiculously when they're mm. in training or yeah. I think they're in training. And that's what it is. Bye bye. Minute heads up. It's our 10 minute heads up. It's really more like an eight minute heads up. It's cool. Yeah. All right, we thank can do you, it. Gina. We are, we got it. We're on it. That's what it looks like in Z thirty nine fifty. Yeah, and, and the the search results are, I mean, what you would expect. They work the way that they're supposed to. There's a little yep. bit improved functionality. One of my favorite things, however, are the hyperlinked uh, column heads that are um, actually allow you to sort, which but is amazing. They only sort things that have been fetched locally. They are not sorting. Correct like dynamic incoming from however many z3950 servers you are connected to they will sort these local results that have been batched here so Which I is, that is a big one for a lot of catalogers and then this is the slightly different implementation of federated search it just gives you a few more actions like add to selection list add to purchase order so yeah the search part is exactly the same the actions that you do from it are yep different. and this is the part that you should actually talk about because this is the new part that is very very cool and exciting yeah so this i mean Again, we're kind of looking at this thing. This allows you to request a background import, um, which means that you can kind of set it and forget it uh, and be notified when it finishes. So um, if you're working in a library and you have multiple things to do, you can get this going, especially if it's a large um, file uh, that includes a bunch of holdings data and all sorts of things that you can set that, come back, be emailed, get back into your queue and go forth and the library in there again after you've been off doing something else. Um, so multitaskers celebrate. And it's also good for just um, performance. Yep. Issues. And this is, and you can go look at your historic uh, background imports here in Mark Batch Import Export. There's now a new sub tab for that. Um, and link right directly into your queues, which I love. What well, I mean, that's not necessarily new, but I still love it anyway. Yeah. This and is an this area is, that I love. And this was a whole, uh, by the way, whole group effort. This was ECDI and their extensive, extensive testing mm -hmm. of this. Um, and this was Stephanie Leary and Mike Rylander and Jason mm -hmm. Etheridge. Um, and, and people during bug squash and yeah, I mean, this is this... a huge, huge thing. It would be great to get this merged, but you know, if you at any point gave feedback on this or looked at this or, you know, tested this, like you were a part of this, you were a part of killing dojo. Congratulations. All right. And um, making acquisitions. This is huge. This is huge right here. Okay. Do it. This is huge. But I'm going to have to do it quickly because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Um, why do we talk like we're running out of time? Um, We're not running out of time. Angular reports. It's amazing. This is the first rewrite of the reports interface since like ever. Yes. Since of, it other than civil reports. This is amazing. It is amazing. This is a uh, Mike Rylander with an interface assist from um, Stephanie Leary. I say assist, but you know, you should see these new interfaces. Um, it adds some nifty new features, sortable grids. Um, and if you recognize some things in these following screenshots, um, it's going to be uh, because they are where some of the components are borrowed from simple reports. 
Um, and then the security report security is separate from Angular reports. I've put them on the same slide. Um, and that adds field mapper attributes. So a field mapper is the thing that tells everything in Evergreen what to do. That's the really super duper short version of the field mapper. Yes. And it, once again, all the developers listening are like, oh my God. Um, We're here to over oversimplify everything. We are. Um, so it gives you ways to, um, you know, uh, redact certain fields, um, certain rows in specific tables, um, particularly those dealing with patron uh, information, so PII. And these. And this uh, is not tied necessarily to permissions opt. yet, right? This is like this is a high level sysadmin. This is yeah. This well, no. I mean, because this is um, yeah, it's it's actually doing the restrictions on the table, so it will. Give, so, yeah. There is a a run, I think, run uh, restricted reports. I forget what it's called, but there is a new permission associated with okay, it. Okay, fantastic. Review, or maybe it's a lower permission. I love that. Okay. All right, cool. And I'm going to show you some pictures real quick. This is the Angular report grid. Da, 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 da. I don't know who, who's hugging their screen right now, but it's got to be a lot of us. Well, you I'm can also I'm kiss your screen. Awesome. You know, there's no judgment here. Um, create template. Where did nullability go? Nullability is now these checkboxes under item. Don't ask me to explain nullability because I always screw it up, but it's in the documentation. It'll be in the documentation. Lena Hernandez wrote brilliant documentation for this. It is available on the branch in Launchpad. Read it, love it. She also pointed out a whole bunch of other like bugs that we were able to fix before uh, this went out to um, before this went out to the community. So ta-da. I love it. Um, you will notice you know, that there is a fields, the display fields and filter fields uh, division. You can also do sort order before your report runs, like it's the modern era, you guys. I know, it's crazy. Ooh, sorry, that was the end of reports. Um, That's okay. I'm trying really hard to get through these last few slides before you have to go. Mark Editor. Well, we're going to do that one. We're, we're going to do this. Mark happening. Editor, yeah. Stephanie Leary rewrote the Mark Editor. It was already in Angular, but she did some fun things that made it more keyword accessible. Um, and I really hope that the catalogers get a chance to whack on this tomorrow in your cataloger meeting. I have sent information to Jennifer Weston. This is on a public test server. Actually, all these things are on a public test server. Next slide. Um, next slide. It's cool. Yay. It looks like this. Look, it looks you better. Can, look, it's got color contrast. Look, it's got uh, combo boxes. Stephanie and Mike did so much fights with combo boxes. Oh, it's you amazing. Can tab this. You can do stuff. The icons on the right let you move fields. <gasps> It you is, can delete fields without using keyboard shortcuts and or right clicking. That's amazing. But you can use a different keyboard shortcut. Like you can just do keyboard <gasps> tabbing around. It's I really love it. fun, you guys. Okay. Next. Next. <laughs> hey. So for cool. the three eleven and three twelve stuff, these are the developers that we. These are not all the developers. These are just the developers and the features we covered. So we uh, have to get to the last notes. slide. We do. Um, these are our sponsoring organizations for 311 and 312. Thank you for making Evergreen better. These are the links that we will, um, you know, that you can see slides. more information about all these things. And then this is our second to last slide. Release 314. It's happening. Yeah. Don't start planning for the features. Well, I'll start planning for it, but you need to start planning for the celebrating because really, seriously, Galen pointed this out. Yep. It's 3.14. And there we go. <gasps> Nice. We might have we that we have the opportunity to kill Dojo in three thirteen. And I heard feedback that there were not enough cat pictures in Equinox presentation. So I'm here to rectify that imbalance. That's not that is an amazing. I want to make a joke about a certain empire, but I'm not going to do it. All right, we are okay. out of time. Thanks everybody. everybody. Thank you for your attention. We love you all. Feel free to chat send us any of your questions and any you know format you have thank you to the community the developers everyone who has made this possible uh it is a real super exciting year for fun stuff yes. in every rain thanks andrea thanks all to all of you